Welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between. Um, grab your vices, chill out, and let's get straight to it. This is episode 32 of Straightforward with Miss B alongside my guest co host, AG. What's up, AG? What's going on? How you doing today? I'm doing wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. I know everybody missed us on last week. Um, as you know, guys, I was on vacation for my birthday. Um, shout out to all the Leos in the building. Let me give us a, um, some cheers and some applause. Shout out to the Leo gang. Leo season is now officially over. It's your birthday on the last day of Leo season? No, it's not. I think the last day of Leo's is the 22nd of August. It's the last day. And my birthday is on the 19th. So not quite, um, you know, not quite the end. But, you know, I was almost I was almost a, v, a Virgo, that's for sure. But shout out to almost shout a, out a Virgos. Okay. Hmm? <laughs> yeah, it sound like you were going to say something else. No, almost was a Virgo, Virgo. So I had a wonderful time in New York City. Did y'all buy some weed off, off the middle of the street? No, no, no. I didn't do any smoking of the weed while in New York. Um, but I had a wonderful time nonetheless. Um, I love New York. I like I like fast paced cities with a lot going on, with a lot of diversity and culture, you know. And I was telling um, I was telling um uh, my friend Kim. So sh- yeah, shout out to Kim and and Nene as well for coming on the, the trip broad. with me. Yes, a couple of the broads. Um, I was <laughs> telling Kim. I said, you know. New York is one of them type of pe- per, uh, places where, you know, it takes a certain type of person or personality to fit in, and I think I would be a great fit in for it because, you know, I can be I can be mean. <laughs> I feel like people in New York are mean. <laughs> oh yeah, I definitely. <laughs> I, love New York. I said that would definitely fit my personality. <laughs> Because, you know, sometimes, you know, I could be a cool and calm, collected person, but other times, you know, I could be quite quite mean, and I feel like I'll be, you know, I can fit in with the environment very good. But anyway. Was y'all hotel on 6th Avenue? No, sir. We was right on uh, Broadway in Times Square was our hotel. Um, we stayed at the, well, I ain't gonna say the name cause I'm not, I'm just not giving free promo, but we stayed at a pretty good hotel downtown. Um, a room was, was cool. Um, yeah, everything, everything was cool. Everything was cool. All our taxi rides, all of that turned out fine. Now we had good drivers. Um, absolutely not. Now that's one thing I, I won't do. I'm not. I, I've done it before in the past when it was a lot safer uh, to be on the subway, but no, we didn't get a chance to do that. Oh, that's what I started having fun. No, no, I didn't want to. I ain't, uh, no. <laughs> yeah, I'm different. I'm different. No. I'm different. I'm different. Yeah, but <clears throat> anyway. <clears throat> Um, no, we didn't do that. Like I said, we spent a lot of our time, um, you know, shopping. You know, that's what us women like to do is shop. So, you to buy an extra bag? Definitely. Bag? Um, actually, no. We kind of figured out how to kind of squeeze everything into our bags. Um, but no, we didn't have to buy any extra bags. But I would definitely be, um, you know, I'll be going back to New York so I can do some other places that I wanted to go to shop that we just didn't have time time to go. So I'll definitely be making a, another trip. Y'all go to the famous Macy's? No. Mm-mm. No. No, it was pretty much, it was my birthday. I already had an itinerary. I already knew places that I wanted to go, and those were the places I wanted to go. Like I said, I, <laughs> this wasn't the first time I've been in New York. I've been in New York several times. I've done all the sightseeing stuff, visited, 
Statue of Liberty, Empire. St- you know, I've done all the touristy stuff what before in the past. I don't care. It wasn't their weekend. It was my <laughs> weekend. What the hell? <laughs> Else, I don't bro. care what they want to do. <laughs> Damn. They can shit. do it on their birthday weekend. This was my birthday weekend. Okay, and they spent it with you. Damn right. So they <laughs> they do what's on my itinerary. Oh my God, okay. You and this coughing. Please put your thing on mute. <laughs> but anyway, no, they didn't do that. No, 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 no. They can they can do those things on their weekend. On their own weekend. Okay, sure. Okay, um, <laughs> you almost made me call you. And it wasn't their first time in New York either. So okay, then say that. <laughs> then you wouldn't have to say all the rest of that mean stuff you were just saying. I just told you I was mean. Hell, I'm staying on brand. <laughs> it's me. But anyway, anyway, how was your weekend, y'all? Uh, it was nice. It was nice. A lot of um, I had my. Uncle, he turned 60. He had a little birthday party up here at the shop. So we kind of kicked it all day Saturday mm-hmm. with the family. So oh, okay. It was pretty good. I can't complain. It's going to be this weekend the one I'm ready for. What's going on this weekend? Going to get the, gonna head to the west, baby. San Diego tomorrow. Oh, okay. Yeah, my friend having his birthday party. Everybody's birthday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, birthday party. Mm-hmm. Well, you should have fun out there in San Diego. I sent you a YouTube link about Tijuana. Did you see it? No, because somebody else shot me down on the Tijuana, so I never thought about Tijuana again. Oh, okay, I wanted you to see it live and up close, and and they, I was like, this nigga's talking about he going to Tijuana. No, he ain't. <laughs> I'm like in the middle of all these drug wars, child, please. Crazy. But yeah, they was talking about it on the news and I just wanted to send you that video. <laughs> mm-hmm. What to discourage me? Yes, to further discourage you <laughs> from going to Tijuana. <laughs> uh, and it was re like I said, it the video was talking about recent events. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, why is he trying to go there? Like, no. Mm-mm. But anyway, but I never seen you a link again. Um, yeah, cause you don't pay don't attention. Care. You don't, don't pay care. attention to stuff. <laughs> like, why do you I even care. try? Like, you, you don't, don't even pay attention. And you don't look at shit. So it is what it is. Right. But anyway, um, before we get started with the topics, I want to say, um, thank people. Um, uh, thank everybody who has been supporting, um, the podcast, um, I noticed like our numbers are increasing. Um, I haven't checked the streaming platforms numbers, but as far as the YouTube numbers, I can see where the views are going up on our videos. Um, the pod, you know, the podcast audio, um, we upload each week, um, as well, you know, as well as our group chat lives on Sundays, but I'm noticing, the numbers increasing. Um, also, I've noticed that on our last podcast audio that was uploaded where we talked about, um, this was episode um, 31, um, where we talked about the IRS and we talked about um, Nicole Linton, which we will um, get back into today as well. I noticed those numbers going up. Um, also, right now, that video has the highest number of views on it. So I appreciate everybody from tuning in. I think everybody may have been tuning into that one um, because of the, um, you know, the nerds who um, ended up hitting those people in that car crash um, in L.A. So I think that was part of why the numbers went up. I think a lot of people are interested, you know, interested in that story. So I appreciate everybody that's been tuning in. I appreciate also um, the people who have been just subscribing to um, the YouTube um, channel as well. Um, finally over 2,300. Um, so we've had like within the last 30 days, we've had at least about 30 new subscribers to the channel. So I am Thank very, very appreciative um, I love you guys. of that as well. Um, so getting into the topic, like I said, we want to start off um, start off just kind of um, giving a brief update of what's been happening um, with 
um, Nicole Linton, um, um, recently was prosecutors who revealed that the um, registered nurse, Nicole Linton, um, who was at the wheel of that fiery car wreck um, in Windsor Hills of West Los Angeles, uh, may have been struggling um, with um, deteriorating mental health issues. Um, they stated that she would self-harm herself. These are things that they found out that she would normally self-harm um, herself, um, and she had a history of being um, involuntarily committed um, for psychiatric treatment um, on several occasions. Um, this evidence came to light um, upon the prosecutors aimed to deny her pretrial release. Um, this information came from the Los Angeles Times. Um, per court documents, um, the L.A. County Deputy District Attorney, uh, Miss Brittany Vinoy, I believe, um, she wrote that the defense has disclosed, disclosed a number of prior incidents which appear to be increasing in severity, um, ranging from the defendant jumping on police cars to jumping out of apartment windows. Um, the defense indicates um, has, I mean, the defense indicates that Nicole Linton has been subject to, you know, two involuntary commitments on several occasions, um, as we stated earlier, to psychiatric treatment and um, has hurt herself more than once. So um, this the authorities be held accountable some kind of way for let her have all those different, you know what I'm saying? She got 13 of this and 10 of this. You know what I'm saying? She had too many different occasions which she should have been somebody should have known somebody now well yes you know? um yes That's i was definitely going to get into that once i finished talking <laughs> um but the california board of registered nursing um the california board of registered nursing has suspended uh, miss linton's nursing license um i didn't read that um the texas board which i believe she's from texas so I'm assuming that she probably have a nursing license in Texas as well, um, but word was not um, released at, on whether or not the Texas Board of Registered Nursing had suspended her license. But as of now, we know that she can no longer, you know, practice nursing, do her nursing jobs in the state of California. Um, but back to your question, um, it's clear that Miss Linton. Um, well, at this point, according to the prosecutors, have dealt with have dealt with some mental issues, uh, which more than likely was you know an episode an episode that happened the day that she decided to you know drive really fast into um, you know into um, a crowd of cars, uh, which unfortunately you know killed several people, and she's been charged on six counts. Um, on six counts, um, it's very a very sad situation, and like you said, with her, with them knowing that she's had numerous previous incidents where police were called, and you know she's been committed to committed to psychiatric treatment, that she would have been. Admitted committed right admitted for some time <laughs> but you know me looking at like these different crime programs and stuff like that from what i understand if someone is committed for psychiatric treatment and and there there wasn't any you know there wasn't any like situations where like this new situation where her killing six people but prior it looks like a lot of it had to do with things that she would do to herself not necessarily to other people so i'm sure they have admitted her um to the psych ward numerous times but they they couldn't they can't keep you in there you know what i'm saying for like well, long periods of time mm. so, so she was trying to do harm to herself Yes. So, mm -hmm. so she was a habitual offender on something like that. 
Right. And I'm sure they probably, you know, did all, ran all the tests. You know what I'm saying? Did all the psychological tests on her, probably, you know, prescribed her medication. Maybe she had medication that she probably was not taking maybe on the day, you know, that she was in that, that wreck. Um, I haven't seen anything about any family, anything. I've been trying to read up on it, and I haven't heard anything about any family. With, you know, as far as her day. family? Right. Shit, if I was her family, I probably wouldn't, I mean, what? I wouldn't probably, you know, family probably don't even want to be in the midst of this. You know what I'm saying? Because of the severity of the situation, they don't, they probably just trying to stay low key. They don't want to be in the news, you know? But maybe, maybe she'll have, you know, some family members, a mom or dad or siblings or somebody that, you know, will come to the trial and, and maybe testify on her behalf as far as, you know, telling her history of, you know, her hi- history of mental illness. Um, R.I.P. to the families that was killed. Cause I seen some little babies, you know, what I'm saying? some infants, and some grown ups. That was a lot of people that was was hurt in this situation. So R.I.P. And if you didn't die, get well soon. Right. Yeah. Definitely R.P. to that type of situation. Um, Nicole Linton, um, no, it's just a very interesting case. Um, like I said, we got a lot of um, views just discussing this topic. So um, as with everybody else, we will continue to stay abreast of this situation because it's it's very interesting, and I this is one I definitely definitely do want to tune in um, if it does go to trial or anything like that, I'm going to be tuned in to this because I want to see exactly how how this situation gets handled, um, considering that, you know, this person, Miss Lin- Linton, um, you know, Linton suffers from mental illness. Um, speaking of, go ahead. <clears throat> we can get out of this one now. We ain't going home from this one. So yeah, probably not, that. but whether or not they put her in a prison or put her into a, you know, like I said, a, a psychiatric facility for the rest of her life, we don't know that yet. So that's the part that I want to see exactly what will be the outcome outcome of that. Um, speaking of females, um, another black female um, came into the news this week. Um Rasa, I believe I am spe- uh, saying their name correctly. I believe it's Rasa or Rasa, and her last name is Kenny or Kenye, um, but it's an African name, K E N G N E. Um, this young lady, basically, um, this young lady basically um, was captured at Hartsfield Jackson Atlanta Airport this week. Um, because of the shooting where she killed two people and injured a third person in Midtown Atlanta. Um, come to find out that this woman um, have had some issues, and let me let me pull up the the article. Here it is. Uh, no, she actually stayed in that one building. <laughs> she did the two. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, well, she um. This lady basically um. May herself may deal with some mental issues. We don't know for sure yet, but just reading up on it, and just looking at some videos of her interaction um with. Um, and in Atlanta police, uh, I believe it might have been a police chief or something like that, as well as um, a judge recently um, in a courtroom. This lady herself may may slightly deal with you know some mental issues as well. But anyway, the thirty four year 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 old Kenye um, 
She sparked complete chaos um, and a shelter-in-place order in Midtown Atlanta um, after police say she shot the property manager and the building's engineer um, at 1280 West Condos. Police said she held a person at gunpoint in the management office um, before shooting a man um, that was later identified as Wesley Freeman um, at an office at 110 Peachtree Street. Um, police arrested Kenye at the International Terminal at Hartsfield-Jackson International um, Airport. Apparently, um, law enforcement later learned um, that one of the one of the men that was shot, um, that was killed, Wesley Freeman, um, was one of several people um, named in a federal lawsuit that was filed by Ken Ye early this early this year. Um, among a number of accusations, Ken Ye listed that she worked in an accounting firm at 1110 Peachtree Street and claimed that she faced retaliation and harassment. Um, so basically, what we've learned so far is that Kenye was having some issues at her job. And she was, like I said, she was like an auditor, I believe, an IT auditor. Um, I think she had a pretty high position, manager or director level mis- position. But while doing some auditing, she found out that the company basically um, had been, you know, fudging the numbers, committing some type of fraud, you know, in the um, accounting Mm -hmm. books. So she basically wanted to blow the whistle on the situation. So I believe at some point, some point she was, you know, I guess she probably had complained maybe to HR to that company and everything, um, and then she finally left the company, I believe, in November of 2021, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, when she left the company, um, she soon filed a lawsuit against them, um, I guess because at that point she felt as though the company themselves wasn't really doing anything. I believe she told law enforcement she may have called the police about the situation as well. Uh, the police didn't do anything. So then, at some point during this lawsuit, I guess she herself had collected evidence, which she had said that she had stored in a safe in her home. She believes that the building manager of her condo was working somehow with the people from her job, and they were able to, somebody was able to break into her home um, or attempted break-ins on several occasions, and she said she had proof of that as well. Break into her home, somebody broke, finally did, broke into the safe, and I believe may have stolen um, some of the evidence. Um, she realized that her safe was broken into when she had found a... Um, like a hard drive, uh, you know, like a storage disk, a little small storage disk um, on the floor or something like that that also contained, um, that had some data and, you know, that she was using as evidence in the lawsuit. So apparently Kenye had been going to several attorney offices uh, to see who would kind of help take her case, this lawsuit case, um, it was mentioned that several people had, you know, several uh, firms turned it down. They didn't want to set the case. They didn't think it was going to go anywhere, which a lot of times, if you'll notice, well, I don't know, here in Atlanta, um, a lot of these firms that work with employment issues, you know, labor law type of issues, um, they don't, when it comes to like major companies and like former employees who want to sue them, a lot of these firms don't really take those cases. They seem to, I don't know if it's just because it takes a lot of time and financial effort, and they know most times, you know, these former employees probably don't have the financial backing to really, you know, go the full distance with a lawsuit. So they don't, they'll just turn it down. But anyway, so this woman had been searching for a firm to kind of, you know, be the people that will handle her um, lawsuit. Um, She had been having bad luck with that. 
as well as with the Atlanta Police Department, which she called on multiple occasions. Like I said, she had been calling, you know, to tell about this situation, <clears throat> but the police department wasn't doing anything. She called them about the robberies, you know, at her home. The police wasn't doing anything. So Kenya basically got to a breaking point where she felt as though no authorities was really helping the situation, which then, you know, set her off to this week right. when she decided to kind of take things in her, you know, take things in her own hands. Um, go ahead. I said enough is enough. She was fed up. She was definitely fed up. Now, Kenya, um, I don't know if she is a full U.S. citizen. I'm going to assume that she is and maybe not was here one of these or anything like that but she is african um she is uh you know i guess her family and stuff still lives in africa um uh, when she went to hartsfield jackson maybe she was getting ready to get the hell up out of the united states and go back to africa but um she's a native of cameroon um and yeah it's it's clear that she was she was going to get the hell up out of here and go you know go somewhere but the strange I only got that go oh go ahead I'm listening. go ahead you might be finna say the same thing I'm so I'm no probably not but <laughs> um but the strange <laughs> thing is they had played on channel two news they had played um like I said they 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 caught her basically they caught her um the taxi cab driver some kind of way they found out she was in a taxi cab um they called the police called the taxi cab while she was still in the car going to the airport, um, basically asking him, is this such and such lady in your vehicle, blah, 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 blah. Um, the taxi cab guy got, you know, got on the interview on the news, basically said that he was, you know, he had seen um, this lady before several times. He's picked her up, you know, seemed like a, a nice lady, whatnot. Um, but, you know, Basically, he just kind of helped the police kind of trail them to the airport, and then that's where she was locked up. So she had a, a look like a little hearing or whatever with the judge. I guess this was going to be like a bond hearing, whatnot, but, you know, they ended up denying that. Um, but her appearance was kind of strange because the judge kept having to tell her she kept talking over him. And the judge kept telling her if people, you know, go on Channel 2 News, they can see the video where she, you know, he hadn't asked her no question or anything like that. He was just telling her, you know, what's going to happen next and explaining certain things to her. And she just kept talking over him. And the judge was like, ma'am, you're going to have to stop talking over me. <laughs> you know, please be quiet. I'm asking you to be quiet. So it just seems like maybe – just that exchange between her and the judge, there could be maybe some form of mental health issues happening there. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not going to put that on her. Um, but but from the on side of it, I think that in listening to the like the story and everything, the background of all what was going on, I believe that she may suffer either she really had some she really found that this company was you know doing this fraudulent activity with their accounting numbers um i think she kind of like mentally got into this paranoia state that's what i can immediately see as the onset it's some form of paranoia um then i think that it just kind of spiraled out of control with her in her mind and what was happening um and it ended up lead into this situation here but i'm not you know like i said i'm not fully taking her side um because like i said the company could have done all these things that she claimed that they've done but until we know you know what i'm saying i just feel like there's some form of paranoia which is a form of like i said a mental health issue as well um i can clearly see that um what you think about the situation uh, well, I think she she basically got fed up with nobody help her, did nobody believe her. And then those people at that apartment complex, I I think they said that um that lawsuit she had had something to do with somebody her patio. And I'm kinda of confused why she why she killed that guy that at the apartment complex. Mm -hmm. I can understand why she shot the people at the 
Yeah, I can't understand none of it really. But when that taxi cab driver asked her about it, she had the chance to get out that taxi cab then. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But she kept on going. No, you okay? You're safe. Yeah, I watched all of that whole ride to the airport. Right. Even after he got off the phone with the dispatcher, whoever. He asked, he said, I can't, I just have to ask you. It's, <laughs> you said, so yeah, he, I was like, what is he doing? <laughs> <laughs> you said, I just have to He's ask like, you. He's like, have you harmed anybody? Or some shit he said. I'm like, what? <laughs> Anybody looking for this? Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, when he started doing that, well, I would have been, been like, stop the cab. Know. I'm getting out. I would have been yeah, like, look, yeah. now you asked me too many questions. You working with oh, the yeah. cops, dude. <laughs> Put he me like, out. They just called, well, he, she told me, like, they just called me on the phone and asked me about you. <laughs> <laughs> when he said that, I was like, oh, no, I'm gone. Right. She could have killed him, too. Yeah. <clears throat> he could have been a victim. For did, she sure. get, uh, did she get caught with another gun? With the gun? I want to say it was, yeah, I think they did end up finding the gun because it was still on her, if I'm not mistaken. I think it was in the little luggage bag or whatever that she was carrying around. I ain't never seen no luggage bag like that. She had like a little. She, cool. she had, <laughs> no, that was like a, um, I, I used to see people take them at my job it's like a laptop bag like a large oh, laptop okay. bag that you can just kind of roll around that's what type of bag it was oh, okay. but um what i was gonna say oh yeah i forgot about that yeah the law lo- the lawsuit yeah the lawsuit i believe i think it might have been two separate things she was working on that she needed attorneys for it was one for the, you know, frauding of the former employer, but then it was also this lawsuit that she was part of with some other tenants in the building that they were trying to sue the condo for, you know, for not um, doing, you know, certain repairs like a patio repairs and things like that that were happening at that building. So it was, I think it's two separate lawsuits that was happening yeah, all at once. Both of those guys' name was on the lawsuit. Right. So I think that I think that, like I said, par- part of this whole sense of paranoia and thinking everybody's probably working against her. I think she may have just started thinking in her mind that, hey, I believe my condo facility is working with my former employer. You know what I'm saying? But she was thinking yeah. that people because it it probably don't, it, it could be two. It could be truly two separate things that was happening all at once. Her issues that she was having with the condo, and then the issues she was having at the at the former job. Now the condo people could have had some maintenance people come in, and you know what I'm saying, and break into her shit. Who knows? But unfortunately, you know, the condo manager and the uh, the person at the job, you know, just had to pay for it. You know what I'm saying? She ended up killing she them. It. Yeah, she handled it all together. Like she knew something. Right, exactly. Like, like they I know was working. Y'all motherfuckers and these motherfuckers work together. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to see both of y'all. Like she left one and went straight to the other one. Yeah, yeah. I think, like I said, I think, and that's what people don't understand. Like once you get your mind set on a certain thing, especially when it deals with paranoia, and no, I'm not a therapist. I don't, you know, so just take, take what I'm saying as a grain of salt. But I think that, I think that, once her mind got to going and all of this shit was happening to her all at once, I think she, yeah, I just think that she put two and she was trying to put two and two together, both of these separate things together as one. And in her mind, she thought that everybody was just working against her. You know what I'm saying? And, and she just, yeah. And she just snapped. So it's a shame that this young woman, you know, it's, it's it's just a shame that it had to come to this for her. Um, she sounded like she was a very, you know, she had a good job, you know what I'm saying, living a good life at a condo or whatever. No family for her either, huh? I no believe her, no fa- yeah, her, I don't think she, no, I don't think she was married or anything like that, no kids. Um, and then, like I said, her family is estranged. They're in, you know, they're in Africa, um, so... Yeah, I don't know if they gonna, you know, help her out or whatever with this situation, but I don't I know. Hmm. Tell me this. I heard. I mean, I know you mentioned mental health earlier with her that she might be. You say you want, you know, say you left put it out there. You said it might be. Okay, so if she just say so, if she did, 
Do you think that they were used that she left the apartments and went straight to the job? And be like, I don't think nothing wrong with you because she knew what she was doing. Oh, it's mental health and being some type of crazy. Is that two different things? First of all, <laughs> anytime you hear the word mental health, people just automatically assume that someone is crazy. You know, I guess cr- crazy is is <laughs> is just not the right term to call it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and he wasn't then, always using the word mental health. I mean, no, we wouldn't, but you know, we just ignorant. We were ignorant. People be ignorant. You know what I'm saying? It's it's a word. It's a more technical technical term to use instead of just calling somebody crazy. But you know, people in the hood or. You know, just you, people from the country just say health. crazy, <laughs> right? You know what I'm saying? You got you you got a mental health problem. You ain't that's what's wrong with you, right? So that's just part of people's ignorance when they say the word crazy. Now, when I'm mentioning mental health in this situ in this situation with Miss Kenya, this is just my own personal. Like I don't know this to be for a fact. She may not suffer from any form of mental health, but just me forming my own opinion of the situation and just reading up on it, I believe that she may suffer from some form of paranoia, and paranoia itself can be considered as a form of mental health, you know, concern as well. So that's all I'm saying. When oh, I yeah. mentioned oh, yeah. the paranoia, but I, yeah, I, I definitely can see where she may, like I said, she may suffer from some form of, uh, form of paranoia. Um, but I'm sure they're going to bring doctors in, you know, therapists or whatnot into once she finally, you know, returns, retains her own, um, you know, counsel to represent her, um, in the courtroom, the judge basically told her, which is when she kept interrupting him that um, that she do not qualify for a public defender. Basically, based on her, I guess, income and whatnot, she, That's gone. they wouldn't give her a public defender, um, but she kept trying to interrupt him, I guess, to let him know that, hey, I've attempted to retain attorneys, on my own, but nobody seems to want to help. And then also she, I believe it it came out that um, basically she was down to her last maybe $3,000. So as far as like income, but, but like I said, based on her formal job, I guess, plus she was a landowner. They said she had a house, a piece of land somewhere where the taxi cab took her first um, Mm -hmm. before going to the airport. So they consider all of that as some assets, you know, and in, in income. Um, therefore, you know, the judge was like, well, you know, we can't give you a public defender because you don't qualify for it. Um, however, I don't know, that may change eventually if she can kind of prove that, hey, you know, I don't, I can't get help anywhere else. You know what I'm saying? As far as counsel goes. So I'm going to be paying close attention um, to this um, case as well. I think this is going to be one that a lot of people is interested in also. Um, So, yeah, we'll talk about this again later. Um, Let's see. Um, The artificial intelligence or virtual rapper, as they call him, FN Mecca. Um, It was some situation came out this week. I had kind of heard this name, but I never really paid attention because, you know, every week we have a thousand new rappers that come out um, and may go viral. um, But it'd be so many that I can't really keep up even as a music hip hop lover. Um, But I had heard the name before um, and I didn't realize I didn't realize it was a robot rapper, basically, in a sense. Um, So this guy, FN Mecca, who had 10 million followers on TikTok, um, 224,000 followers on Instagram, um, the robot rapper basically um, got signed by Capitol Records. However, 
um, you know, the public basically um, was pissed off and there was a lot of backlash to the signing because of the uh, stereotype types that this robot rapper um, kind of represented not only in their in its image, but also in the lyrics. So basically FM Mecca, um, FM Mecca basically will use the word, you know, the word nigga in his raps on, uh, in multiple times. Um, the rapper wore like these green dreads, you know, green dreads had all the jewelry. Um, also, you know, was going some, through some things um, virtually with the cops and got locked up. So there was a lot of backlash from music um, lovers um, and connoisseurs who basically felt as though, you know, this 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 whole robot guy is, you know, misappropriating the black, the black culture, you know, and uh, we don't want this. And they feel as though Capitol Records, uh, Capitol Records should have been, um, you know, careful when attempting to sign, you know, sign this uh, this virtual rapper um, to his record label, to their record label. Now, come to find out, there is a white guy who created this character, FN Mecca, um, and also, which is crazy. Now, I don't know if the white guy create the rap lyrics. Um, but there is another guy who was actually, I don't know, he didn't really look fully black. He might have been mixed with something, um, and I forgot his name. Um, but he came out to state, say, stated that he was actually brought on as the voice, basically, the, the voice that you would hear coming out of this robot's mouth, um, this, this uh, you know, guy, this other guy who is a rapper who does his own music, um, was hired on to be the voice of FM Mecca. And he himself basically stated that, hey, they brought me on um, when the uh, character was created. They wanted me to basically be the person who would rap the lyrics for the character and everything. But he said as soon as um, they got signed by Capitol Records, he said that they he was ghosted, basically. So... It, all in all, all they wanted him for was his voice, but they probably didn't want to include him on any, you know, any benefits or financial benefits that they would gain um, from, you know, getting this robot character signed to a major label. Um, this some crazy shit, ain't it? Yeah, they want to goddamn get a robot to rap. They'll sign anything not to get no nobody. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like these <laughs> labels doing anything they can to make a book, man. Well, they really doing what everybody else is doing because people getting robots to do work that humans do. So, you know, what's the difference? I mean, it's a difference, but why not get a robot to rap? That's crazy. Rap. It's crazy. I would have never thought of it, but it was crazy. Yeah. I mean, I don't really see. I think. This is just part of how the world is evolving. You know, artificial, artificial intelligence or AI, as they call it, it's here it, it, and it's not going anywhere. So I do understand maybe the need to start introducing artists this way or coming up with these characters. And that's fine. That's fine. But I guess, you know, like I said, part the issue was that this particular character. I have three different people with it. The person that made it. The, no, the that ain't the, the problem. You can have a million people who controls the robot, but don't have a robot who's just doing these stereotypical black, you know, yeah, black and rapper. The, 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 the N word. Is saying the N word. Yeah, that's too yeah, much. Beat. That's way too much. That's that's too much. But make your own white rapper. You know what I'm saying? Like, do you a white You know why white he, he gave him some green eyes? He black, but he gave him green. Child, <laughs> just a bunch of mess. He looked crazy. He looked crazy. But don't be saying nigga in your raps, man. And you a whole white guy behind the scenes running this shit. No, that ain't going to work. That ain't going to work. So Capitol Records are some idiots. 
I mean, I can understand that they wanted to, you know, push the envelope. They want they're being progressive. They're they're trying to see what's the next thing that's happening and they probably want to jump on that and kind of be the first music label to kind of move in that direction. That's that's quite all right, you know. However, they should have did more research and they should have did they didn't do all their research clearly. You know what I'm saying? Before signing this dude. Hey. Tell me this. Who get do we get to keep the check? No. I mean that you dropped me. That man ain't they he probably didn't even get a check yet. How quick this shit happened. He got signed. He got signed at one, and then it seemed like by three o'clock he was they went they he wasn't signed no more, so the ink wasn't even dry on the contract yet. Give me a check. I'm going straight to the bank with it. Soon as I leave my dog. Yeah, right. they not um. <laughs> yeah, they they was like no 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 no. We can't we can't okay. stand behind this, and they you know of course they released the statement and everything like that. I just feel like, you know, like I said, the world is moving in the, in a, in this direction. It's inevitable. They've already, like you said, they have, you know, they got self-driving 18 wheelers now. You know what I'm saying? That may eventually replace truck drivers. There's automated automated machines and robots in all of these warehouses. Um, you know, for these various companies. So it's just it's inevitable that it's going to happen. Um, it's just it's it's gonna have to be very uh controlled and regulated, I believe, how how it happens in certain industries um such as this. We don't need to have a bunch of characters just trying to emulate and stereotyping what they think, you know, a rapper or somebody like that should be. That's crazy as hell. And plus it's so many it's so many struggling artists out there. It's so many, you know what I mean, that's very talented who just waiting for their big break and for Capitol Records to just kind of overlook them and, and end up signing a fucking robot is absurd. <laughs> <laughs> it is fucking crazy. It is crazy. As you put it that way. <laughs> crazy, man. That's crazy. But anyway, so anyway, that is all that we had today. Um, we will be shortening the topics on the podcast. That way we can dive a little deeper into them. Um, my goal is to, um, do a little bit more research, um, on whatever the topic is going to be. Um, that way we can just have some other information maybe they aren't talking about in the news, um, I just want people to be able to get something different from this podcast um, than they do with others who may cover, you know, the hot topics and the gossip and stuff like that. I want to take it to kind of like the next level. Um, So we're going to shorten the number of topics. And then we will leave all the craziness um, and stuff like that. We will leave um, to talk about those on Sunday um, on the group chat lives on YouTube on Sunday nights at 9 o'clock p.m. Um, so thank you again for everybody that has been subscribing. Um, turn on your notification bell as well so you'll know when we actually go live. That way you can join in in the comments or if you want to, you know, come up and uh, speak your piece, you can also do that as well. Um and yeah, we definitely appreciate it. Did you have anything before we go? Um, yes, we will be diving deeper into topics. So why do he repeat yeah. what I say? I just said that. <laughs> well, can I finish? With... Uh, go ahead. Wow. All right. <laughs> so you guys get ready to enjoy a more in depth conversation with, with us, okay? Excuse me. Child. Anyway. Yeah, thank you guys. Um, and yeah, be ready for that. And don't forget, like I said, join us on YouTube. Join us on social medias at STR, the number eight FWD MSB, um, and all streaming platforms at straightforward with Miss B. 
And until next time, we will see you guys. Bye-bye.